I am Hallie Caster Jane, and welcome to the Hallie Caster Jane Show. We're along with my partner in politics, veteran White House correspondent Matthew Cooper. We slice and dice all things politics, and some days, Donald Trump, too. On this episode of the Hallie Caster Jane Show, welcome to the podcast and the Banana Republicans of America. On this week's episode, Matt and I pondered Donald Trump's refusal to concede his defeat by President-elect Joe Biden, as do all his Republican lemmings, and begin the traditional orderly transfer of power. But that's just where we begin. Hold on to the Republic. Someone, please. Here we go. Welcome, my friends. It is 66 days, 16 hours, 32 minutes, and 32 seconds until the inauguration of President-elect Joe Biden. Hey, but That's who's... what you say. <laughs> well, we're going to talk about that in a minute. Who's counting, Cut. right? Not Donald Trump, who in protest to America's choice of Biden for president is sitting in his bunker or Matt on his golden throne tweeting away that he is the winner of the November 3rd election, <laughs> the election he calls a fraud. At the same time, we've reached yet another milestone, a weekly event. And this is sad. Over 11 million confirmed cases of the virus in the U.S., 253,940 dead American souls. It, it's incomprehensible. Hospitals across the nation are overwhelmed. And by the way, the unemployment rate is climbing again, just announced minutes ago. Uh, we've been told to forego Thanksgiving, family gatherings this year. And what is Trump doing about it all, Matt? Let's go back to where I began, hunkering down in his White House bunker, tweeting from his golden throne, his henchmen in the courts trying to get the election overturned. And we thought, I just want to tell you, just a few days ago, you and I talked and said, oh, oh everything would be cleared up. Nope. I think we are in a bigger hole than we were before the election. Your thoughts, darling. <laughs> Hallie, why won't you count every legal vote? I mean, I, I, I don't know why you're rushing to give this to the Democrat. I mean, count every legal vote. Uh, Isn't it okay to ask questions? I, uh, I mean, just because, you know, uh, Kamala and Mark Zuckerberg want this election over doesn't mean we shouldn't count the votes. Oh, God. I mean, I'm honestly. channeling my inner time. No, I mean. Um, I hear you. I mean, it's like you sound like him, by the way. You're doing it. You, you do a good Tucker. Well, you know, you have to, you have to concern trolling. Well. <laughs> yeah. No, this is nuts, though. What's wrong with counting all the votes? That <laughs> used to be how he did in America. Not anymore, apparently. <laughs> uh, um, yikes. It's Yikesville. Well. Yeah. Okay, uh, maybe let me, look, maybe I, I ask you this question. With you. Look, it's, it's, it's both. Each day it becomes more alarming and less alarming at the same time, if that's possible. In other words, I think we are on an inexorable march to the electors voting and um, Biden's inauguration. At the same time, he is getting weirder and his supporters are digging in in a way that um, I think we failed to, I failed to imagine. Um, and by supporters, I really mean the the Republican Party. I thought there would be more sensibility, <laughs> more sensibility. I just thought a little more transitioning to reality. Yeah, no, I didn't think you know reality would be the you know the charge of a couple of state officials, <laughs> as opposed to like the U.S. Senate. But you know, clearly they're gonna they're gonna play along with Trump as long as Trump is doing this. Um, See, I here. Here's where I am. I, I first of all, this is a question that I think really is, in some ways, at the core of this. I'm wondering how long the Democrats' patient la patience lasts, and when they realize, Matt, that they were patient too long. And let me put in parentheses again, because there's a pattern here with the Democrats, which is, you know, they always play it by the book. They right. they think the rules, you know, count. And then they go along with the program. And then then they make their stab. And then nothing happens from their stab. I'm going to the impeachment, for instance, because they've been nurturing the crap all along. So I'm worried about that. I am deeply, 
worried about that because I do think Trump doesn't want to go away. And if he can figure it out, never mind. He figured it out. He's in the middle of a slow coup. And he can either carry it out at the end or he can't. But that's his choice at this point. Not the Democrats. Not history. Not the system. That's what I think is going on. Well, what what would you have the Democrats do? I I I think that uh, Biden probably needs and with 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 everybody standing around behind him, get up there and and make this, you know, the speech of a lifetime. This is what's going on. This is not normal. This is unacceptable. This has got to stop. Um, people are confused. They don't understand what's going down. It's not their fault. We embrace you, Magas, but the fact of the matter is. He is putting your lives in jeopardy at this point. If you think if you're not worried about anything else, never. And and then there's democracy, and it's on the ropes. There is no reason you can't get up there and make that from you know from the steps of Capitol Hill. You know what I'm saying? From the steps of the Capitol, uh, well, well, with everybody behind him, Biden. I don't think that's such a bad thing. I just think this. Okay, we'll we'll accept this, and you know he'll come around eventually, and it's all. No, every day he's doing something else that's not only undermining democracy clearly, and that should I don't know which comes first. I guess lives do, but if he will not let his people from uh, the uh, coronavirus uh, uh, thing talk to 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 Biden, and we know that we have in the next couple of weeks. Uh, a uh, you know two maybe two vaccines coming out and no way to to disseminate them, which will be a coordinated effort by the team in place and the team coming in if it were to come in. Yeah, this is serious stuff. Matt, seventy seven percent of Magas think Trump won at this point because nobody's stopped him in the last since the third. Hmm? Yeah, no, I, I I agree. I don't know if you know there's the logistics of of how you deliver such a speech. You know, if you do it on the steps of the Capitol, you're going to have hecklers and Republicans there. And All right, so I don't. Really so do the where it. is not the issue. It's that it right. needs to be done is the issue. Um, for instance, this afternoon at, at 12 o'clock when Georgia is supposed to issue the, the recount thing, you know, Trump goes onto Twitter and says, yo, the RNC is going to have a big meeting. We're going to announce big stuff at the same time. I mean, this is the game that he plays and he plays so well. Right. Right. Uh, well, look, I, I'm not saying don't do it. I mean, you know. Do you think that the Democrats should just sit back and do nothing and wait? No, I don't think they should sit back. I don't think they should sit back and wait. But the question is whether another, you know, speech would, would help. I part of, Yeah, sure. It couldn't hurt. Well, I'm more I mean, than a speech. Be- I'm saying more, more than a speech. I'm saying because I'm using the word speech. OK, you can get caught up in that. But I'm saying a, a grandstanding moment with. Uh, like enough. Yeah, no, I, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's. I, Are you I concerned that Trump really isn't going to leave? I mean, his new game plan. Let me let me interject. This is he. If he can't overturn the votes, they are making a decided effort to hold off the certification. And we'll talk about in depth in that in, in a minute. But that's the game plan. So, do you are you on the side of? This is possibly a coup, <laughs> or are you on the side of it's just Trump well, being Trump? We're dealing with the psychotic and people who enable a psychotic. Uh, I believe <laughs> he would like to, if he can find a way to stay president, he will. Um, and barring that, if he has to leave, he's going to make things as big a mess as possible. He's just going to poop all over the floor. You know, he's not really a toddler, he's an infant. And, uh, I I think he's, you know. What's the talk? What's the talk amongst your friends? Because you have some powerful friends and smart friends. Powerful friends. friends. Well, you do. You know everybody in the media, and I know you talk to everybody. Um, Well, I I think. What are their thoughts? Well, everyone's jaw has dropped, you know, because it's so bizarre and 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 terrifying. (laughs) Um, On the other hand, you know, he is. He is losing every laughable court battle. He's lost every but uh, one. Yeah, it's very hard for him to, like, you know, flip six states or whatever he would need to do. 
Yeah, but then you're actually, okay. But let me interject there because what you're talking about is him doing it legally. He doesn't care right. about legally. I mean, that's a no. I understand. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, he would yeah. have to try to delay the certification, right, or right. throw out the certification, or get the state house to somehow change their electors and how they choose electors. Yeah, no, I understand. I, yeah. His legal road has only gotten, you know, um, harder if nigh impossible. At the same time, his political actions have gotten crazier. And I guess there's a sort of logic to that. I mean, of course, that's that's what would happen with him. So let me tell you uh, what my so friend Craig Sarge. So, yeah, so are you? I, I forgot what your original question. Well, was. no, it was it was. Are you worried? Are you on the side of me with? I'm um, saying, you know, there's a slow coup that he can either uh, he he's in the midst of, and he'll make his final decision as to where he actually wants to go with all of this as he gets there because he's not a person who plans ahead. He waits to see what, you know, what the zeitgeist is and geist is and then he goes with it. So so are you on you know me, I'm always the one between you and myself who is, you know, the more dramatic. And you're always very most of the time. Well, I just you know, <laughs> except whatever. he's not off air guys, but 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 the political pundit, you're you're always much more steady and you know. Well, whatever. I, I don't know what I am, but thank you. I think um, whatever you know. Look, whatever works. Um, I I don't know if I don't know I don't know what will work here. You know, if if um, I mean, there is something to be said for just like planning your administration and stepping forward every day and acting like the president elect. I don't think that's the worst way for Biden to go. No, here. I agree. Yeah. That's all he has. You know, and just sort of ignoring the guy and, you know, just uh, letting everyone get used to the idea he's about to be president instead of making it seem like there's a crisis. You know, I think there's nothing Trump would like more than to engage Biden every day. Well, I agree with that, but all I'm saying to you is, and I'll say say what my friend Greg Sargent from the uh, Washington Post and, and Phil Bumper both said. They're appalled by people just shrugging this off, both of them. And all they do is write about this all day long. They're absolutely, yeah. and that's where I am. I'm saying, why are you guys just like sitting back and going, oh, it'll be, it'll be okay. Well, it, it's not going to be okay. We know that historically how Trump, you know, works. So I agree with you that on the one hand, Biden doesn't want to engage because he doesn't want to fuel the flames, uh, if you will. Um, but like I said in the beginning, when does patient, when do the Dems realize that their patience went on too long? And that's yeah, what I'm worried I about. I, I mean, look, I, I'm not saying you're wrong. I just, I don't, I don't know what the best way forward is. I, I'm, I mean, certainly there are things they could do they're not doing, like getting this GSA oh my God, that's woman just, yeah. up on the hill. But they never do anything. They never, because they, they won't issue a subpoena. They, they don't, they say, we're going to, Democrats, we're going to issue a subpoena. Then they don't. We're going to issue a subpoena. Nope. There are a lot of things they could be doing. They're not doing it. No, I agree. And I would, you know, be putting all the, like, I you know, I don't know if it coming from Biden is the way to go, but, you know, putting every TV, every respected doctor in America, including all the ones with, you know, TV shows like out saying like out front to make the speech saying like he's killing people. We have to start the transition. But Would they've been be doing effect? they've been doing that. Actually, um, a number of doctors have um, come on now well, and said that. Uh, uh, no, no. Um, let's let's go here for a minute the democrats are in somewhat of a disarray which is bizarre but it's true they did win after all in the presidency well, even though the zeitgeist right now in washington is they lost because they lost so much in the house I mean, oh my god it's crazy and i guess nancy's back in but but um uh they're kind of like on the fence with what they're going to do about um what's his name from uh, chuck schumer but the fact that they're, they're, they're a little bit in disarray, so, you know, they haven't really elected the, the yeah, leadership. Well, they, they, um, yeah, they are. Right. A little bit. A yeah. little bit. And so what concerns me there is, and therefore, you know, um, Nancy certainly 
is is a powerful voice. She wants to be, but she can't be yet because they haven't calmed everybody down from the uh, great losses they took in the election. Um, but something. And you're right. I agree with you. Biden has to be careful because he doesn't want to look like the bad guy in all of this. And he shouldn't be the bad guy in all of this. Uh, you know, let him stay off to the side and let him have his people do what they need to do. But he needs to start ordering people to start doing some stuff. That's my point. And not sitting around... Um, and doing nothing. Mm-hmm. Now, here's another question um, that I think we need to explore, and that, you know, what's going on with the Republicans? If everything were to go to a long plan, Biden will be the president. And so what I'm, I'm, I'm completely stumped as to, you know, uh, Trump is going to run again? Trump will be 80, how old? 70, what is he, 77? So I know he's younger than Biden, but, like, Biden's not going to run in four years. I think actually Biden, there's going to be a lot of pressure for Biden. I mean, yeah, if Biden has a good term, he'll run the second time. I I think Biden's the only one who can hold this victory coalition together at the moment. Um, But but we can get to that. Yeah. But 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 I guess what I'm saying to you is the, the these idiots in Congress, these Republican idiots in Congress, they're they're nuts. I mean, they're 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 traitors, Matt. Can we just call them what they are? Yeah, I mean, look, they all, they're all scared of their own shadow. They're all scared of their Trumpian constituents. They've all realized that, you know, that they're, the party's, uh, you know, filled with Trumpites and they're all afraid to offend him. And they don't, or they don't want to piss off Mitch. They don't want to make Mitch's life harder. So they're all just going along with this bullshit. And it's, it, it is traitorous at a certain point. Um, I mean, look, then they all know better. They all know he lost, except for maybe the most delusional ones like Jim Jordan or Gohart or something. But um, <laughs> Can you believe we're talking you... about Congress as being delusional? How scary is this? No, look, it's totally scary. I mean, look, you know, it's, uh, you know, I think they're they're like the Democrats. I think they're just hoping he calms down. And, you know, accepts reality or sulks at Laura or Mar-a-Lago and leaves at this point. Well, they, uh, so what is this? So the, the, this is, uh, uh, let's wait for the baby to, you know, stop his tantrum and come to terms with reality. I mean, even that is insanity. Yeah, look, I mean. That's where we are? Uh, here's here's Loeffler and Purdue and, and Georgia, the two senders. Uh. Um Biden carried their state. They're screaming at the Republican Secretary of State that he's not, you know, he's not helping Trump enough <laughs> um, because they're so afraid of the, you know, their Trump, their Trumpian constituencies. They don't want to, they don't want any daylight between themselves and um, Trump. God. I mean, even with Loeffler, who Trump opposed and kept making fun of for months, uh, you know, and who has all the all the fuck you money in the world to walk away from this. Um, it's unbelievable. But, it, okay, there uh, we go. There, I mean, Matt Cooper just said it's all unbelievable. That's pretty amazing, folks. Trust me when I tell you. I want to. I want to also say something. Um, Joyce Carol Oates, who I've had on the show, um, she compared this to the Germans watching Hitler and recognizing what was going on, but not only turning their cheats, but collaborating and making money on the deal. You know, eh. That's what scares me. And I know we don't like to do Holocaust, you know. Yeah, I'm not crazy about Nazi analogies. But, but look, there's this no one, question there's yeah. a lot of... We're at a weird place. Americans are at a very strange place. You know, and we blame the problem. And I want to I reiterate this because we all blame it only on Trump. And I want to say over and again, Trump is, a, is just a, a symptom of what really is ailing this country. Uh, and 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 I, there are a lot of mentally ill people in this country. That's, you know, I don't. I, they're not. They're not deplorable. They're not awful. They're just really not wrapped real tight. They're really on the edge. They're really not in a functional place, because if you're told that fifty percent of your people, and we'll talk about this in the second half of the show, if you're told that fifty percent of South Dakotans are now testing positive. Fifty-five percent of South Dakotans are testing positive for COVID, and people are in the hospital. And a nurse testifies that these people who are dying from COVID say, 
tell I'm not dying from COVID. Stop telling me I'm dying from COVID. There's no such thing as COVID. We have a mental health issue going on here. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I agree. I agree. And that is what happened in Nazi Germany. People were so stressed out from not having any money and from having no food to feed their kids. But whatever came along, they went along with. And, and I fear, you know, now they're less than 50%, we know from the vote, but not much less, um, that we're, we're in dangerous times. We're in dangerous times. I, I would love to see what historians say in comparison to where we were at the Civil War at the time. And it was for different reasons and stuff. But, but um, I, I think those are all you know, things to uh, to talk about. I want to talk about what happened, by the way, with the electors Is it in, in uh, was it Wisconsin, where the last minute the two Republicans said that they weren't going to? Oh, yeah, they weren't electors. They were just, uh, um, they were just canvassing officials. Okay, so, t- so low, tell us Wayne that. County. Right, Wayne officials. County, yeah. yeah. And they re- and now this morning, even, you know, they, they, they were those few minutes of, oh my gosh, are we going into a constitutional crisis here? Now this morning they're asking for their votes to be re- they did vote and now they're asking for the votes to be rescinded. Yeah, well, we're in true banana republic land. Um, <laughs> basically, uh, the way the way it works in most places around the country is that there are Republican and Democratic observers when there's ballots counted, and usually they sign something that kind of certifies the vote that it was all on the up and up and legit. And normally that's like you know just all happens behind the scenes and it's no big deal because we're not in an insane period. But this time in Wayne County, which includes Detroit, the biggest, most populous county in key state, uh, the two Republicans, uh, who over, you know, who, who helped certify this and, and, and deal with the count were refusing, uh, for a long time to sign it, saying no, there might, you know, might not be okay, or even if Wayne County's okay, uh, you know, the state's not okay. So they were refusing to sign it, and then everybody in the state, from the business community to the, to the newspapers, the Democrats to others, were saying, like, you know, you're being ridiculous, and, you know, this is wrong, and just find the fucking thing. And, um, sorry, sorry, I cursed. It's, yeah. it's a podcast. Um, anyway, uh, so they, they both, it. yeah, they signed it. So they signed it. Finally, they signed it. First, they say they're not going to sign it. Then they sign it. Then after they sign it, they say, oh, we were under duress. We couldn't really sign it. You know, <laughs> so now they're trying to take their votes back. I mean, this is, and you have to remember, these are the Republicans of like, you know, Detroit. There aren't many of them. Yeah, like two. Uh, <laughs> and that, there know, is. Just, <laughs> yeah, this would be like the Democrats of Wyoming throwing a big fit. Right, right. Um so, you know, this is the this, this is, is the crazy madness. we're in and and this is all being fueled by the Republican Party. Let's move to to Wisconsin because this is another crazy. You know, now one of Trump's is the Dominion voting system. It's all their fault, you know. They were messing around with the votes and they weren't tallying properly la la la. So it turns out that the in Wisconsin, I don't know if you know this, uh they're only it would have cost uh, seven million or something to do it, and Trump didn't want to do, pay the seven million right. up front. So they only picked certain counties. Of course, the counties they picked were uh, black vote counties, Democratic right. counties. And what's so bizarre about it is that the Dominion voting systems weren't used in any of the county, counties that he's yeah. up, for, you know, uh, questioning. So I mean, it really, we really are in 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 you know, silly time. Yeah, I mean, he's, you know, as we know, as we've known since the Four Seasons press conference, (laughs) the one thing they should have prepared for is a legal fight. And they didn't bother to do that because, you know, Jared was too busy elsewhere. Um, Yeah. Yeah. So all all these legal cases they keep bringing are are falling apart. Well, this is why I'm worried, though. This is why I'm worried, because those were they knew they were going to fall apart. Now, let, let me let me do a sidebar here. So now he makes good old Rudy Giuliani his number one lawyer, who he's paying $20,000 an hour. Now, I'm sure you, I don't know if you do it, but I get all of the Republican, you know, all the stuff that comes from Trump in my email um, uh, account. And, and, of course, it's all about raising money. 
all of it. Now, I don't, and it says at the bottom of the email, this will go towards, you know, um, paying off the campaign debt or something. But I, I, I want to make the point. Grifting is going on here. And, you know, and I, I can envision, I'm not saying he's doing it, but I'm here how I said it. I can envision that, that he hires Rudy. Rudy gets his 20000 an hour to do virtually nothing but look like an idiot and do his crap. And then what happens at the end of the day, Trump gets 10 and Rudy gets 10 and everybody's happy. It's grifting. It's money laundering. It's what Trump does best. I mean, he's raised over the four years he's been in like an enor- more money than he ever would have had, by the way, if he just remained the, you know, Trump. Not President Trump. So, I, you know, these things are all at play in all of this, too, and people should be aware of the fact that this kind of um, grifting is at work. But you mentioned um, Jared. Where are Jared and Ivanka? Quiet. Very quiet. Right. Well, I have no special knowledge. I mean, I guess the reports were that he, Jared was, you know, charged with putting together the legal team, so that worked out well. <laughs> um and that they're, you know, they're among sane contingent, you know, trying to get him to back down. But who knows if that's any of that's true. Yeah. And what's um, the, I mean, what happens to him? What happens? Uh, there's a great report about if they try to go back to New York, you know, she won't be going to the Met Gala anymore. Ivanka and, um, you know, who's going to touch them in New right, York? Right, right, right. So they're not. Yeah. They're so not I think they wind up in same. Florida. God help us, but um, <laughs> I think that's right. I, I don't, that I, could happen. Yeah, I don't see them going back to New York, any of them. Um, but uh, so I wanted to go on to uh, 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 something else that just kind of is indicative of all of this. Well, and, you know, they got to build the Trump Library. That's a whole other, you know. Oh gosh, I mean, oh gosh, to put what in it? Yeah, to put what the Apprentice shows. <laughs> <laughs> well, you put all the papers in all Well, the, they won't know, be there just, because it's my contention. A lot of what he's doing right now is he's destroying all the papers well. so that nobody can see what the hell he didn't do. I, right. Honestly, right. I, you know, I mean, they don't want to let anybody see his COVID stuff. And, you know, my guess is there's not much that, there to see uh, or what and then whatever little there was. Uh, it was so crazy that they know, you know, it'll be used against them. So they don't want to do it. Uh, there's some there's some stuff going on here. You are listening to the Helly Caster Jane Show. The Helly Caster Jane Show posts new podcasts weekly at hellycasterjane dot com and is available wherever you listen to your podcasts. Be sure to find us on Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and on all your favorite apps. You can find the Helly Caster Jane Show on your Alexa device too. Just say the Helly Caster Jane Show. Oh. And come play with me on Twitter at Hallie Show Quotes. But but I wanted to to go here, two places. One is while we weren't looking, McConnell is busy stacking the government with right wingers. Yes, a judge factory down there, right? Okay. Uh, now he didn't get Judy Shelton, who's a lunatic, uh, for a Fed chair through, but that's only because uh, what's his name got um, COVID. Grassley. Or- Thank you, Grassley. So the vote that it was such a tight vote, any even Republicans think she's nuttier than a fruitcake. Um, but he is trying to stack everything as much as he can, and he's putting people into positions within the government, not just in the courts, that are right wingers. Um, I don't know how that holds up once Biden gets in. I guess he's allowed to fire who he wants, but there you go. Um, then, uh, I, I also wanted to talk about, um, Tom Cotton. Can remember last week I said to you that, that, uh, what's his name from California got back in the rich guy. I said, Daryl Issa got back in, you know, under the radar. We didn't even pay attention to that. But did you know that Tom Cotton, the Dems didn't even put up anybody against him? I just found out this morning, a friend sent me an email. Did you know? I'm like, can't say I'm shocked. Well, this is how badly the Dems have ran this whole thing. I mean, you know, and and we'll talk about that another day because it's a it's going to be a big story, eventually when 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 uh, you know um, Trump everything settles down there. But but you know we have to talk about that. We need to talk about also that Republicans elected a record number of women. Now I have a hard time using the word women and Republican in the same sentence, but that's me. Do you know all the blue states were won by women or minority Republicans that they that the Dems lost were won by women or a minority Republican? I mean, that's pretty ast- astonishing. Twelve, I think, they got in? Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, there's there's something going on there, too. 
that uh, I, I think at some point is going to have to be looked at because uh, although white women certainly got Biden in, they didn't do a lot of helping, did they, in the in the local races or this, you know, Congress? I, I think that's a conversation that, that uh, you know, at some point needs to be had. Um, can I ask you this? I, I, I may be jumping around a little bit. I, these were questions I've had on my mind all week. In Florida, for instance, they know what ha- they say what happened, and we'll have another conversation about that. We could even have it right now. Uh, losing Miami Dade, the Democrats, which had so long been a stronghold, uh, and the reason they lost was on socialism. That they just ran that word socialism into the minds of uh, Cubans, Americans down there, until they believed that Biden, who has <laughs> been in government for 45 years and was a centrist uh was no socialist why is socialism worse than fascism i mean somebody explain that to me well that's that's not how they see it so i mean they you know look these are people with uh you know a very seared and real personal experience with socialism and they don't see trump as a fascist so I well mean, they don't I, see i understand, if, I understand yeah. your point rhetorically but, yeah you know. yeah and i think it it says two things. One, uh, one is Trump is a fascist. <laughs> two is it's interesting to me how well the Republicans are able to message and the Democrats aren't. That's, um, that's one of the yeah. big fails of the Democratic Party. And it gets back to what I was saying in the beginning with them getting out there and screaming like banshees about what's going on here. They just don't fight well. And they got the they got the presidency. I I'm curious as to whether it was a um a luck or it was skill. And I think those are questions that need to be really pondered in the next four years. <laughs> over the next four years. Because there's something kind of crazy going on, if you ask me. Um you know, the fact that it was such a a a, a, a Defend how many six million votes now are we at that he that Biden won popular vote ahead? Yeah, which is astonishing. I agree, I, I get that, um, but it was really you know, yikes, close. And when when you've got a lunatic like Trump in the White House, it should never have been that close. Um, so I I, I just um, I just want to say that. Um, okay. Do we need to go further into, uh, no, Lindsey Graham. Let's talk Lindsey Graham. Oh, my God. What? Oh, my God. What the hell, Matt? You want to tell everybody what Lindsey Graham was up to this week? Well, apparently, I guess Lindsey Graham called the Georgia Secretary of State to you know, inquire about the recount. And according to the Republican Georgia Secretary of State, you know, Graham was, you know, pressuring him to toss out legitimate ballots. Now, Graham denies that uh, vociferously, but um, there's really no reason Graham should be calling the Georgia Secretary of State anyway. So, you know, for a lot of reasons, I tend to believe the Georgia Secretary of State in that account. Well, there was somebody listening uh, look, into the call who also talked and said, yeah. Yeah, look, he's the most anti I mean, look, he's gone from being, you know, one of the most anti-Trump Republicans to, you know, being the president's best friend. We've seen this for a long time now, and, and it's only getting worse. But this, to me, really, this is pretty serious stuff. This is This is treasonous. This is getting in the midst of an election. This is truly a breach of of legality. Um, and this is one of those things that I'm saying when you have the, the, the head of the judiciary, for God's sakes, <laughs> calling <laughs> to try and play, you know, to, to talk this guy into doing something illegal. There, there's a problem there, Matt. Now they, they say maybe they're going to subpoena Graham. This should have been pushed to the front. I mean, they should have made hay out of this. I mean, they, they they virtually have him doing something illegal, and they have witness to it. So I, why? This is what, I, you know, it's a theme that's running through my mind uh, the past week. Actually, as you know, for the past year. But seriously, this why, why are they not? This is nuts that he would get away with this. 
And this is the kind of thing that we got to where we are today. Because if you let every tiny little breach of what is democratic kind of like, eh, you get to this, a president who refuses to leave the White House and says he was not voted out of office when he was. This is the pattern. So whose fault? You know, if you leave your door unlocked and you get robbed, whose fault is it? The robbers or yours? I mean, you know, these are things we really need. To, this is important to me I because I think this is what's going on and the Democrats better figure this out now and stop it and fix it. And yes, you can blame the Dems. I get a lot of pushback from people, you know, from my friends on Twitter or what have you. And I said, no, you can't be blind either. You have to look at your side and say, what did they do wrong? My Whenever my voice goes up five octaves, we know I'm getting emotional. <laughs> but am I wrong? You, it's the, you can't let little tiny things go in politics. That's the lesson. You have to, you have to stop from doing that in order for you to control, to keep democracy safe. Mm? Right. I mean, there's no, you know, there's, there, it's a practical matter. You can't really, there's no U.S. attorney who's going to like, try to get a grand jury to indict Lindsey Graham over this phone call. And I, I'm not sure that they should. Uh, it's, you know, it's just not a clear cut enough case of, you he, know, he called crime. three states and all of them are Republican states that are in question as far as Trump is concerned. But you do have somebody who was witness to the call who says that's what it sounded like to me. I'm not saying the attorney general needs to do it, but I think somebody in Congress needs to do it in one of the committees um, to beat the crap out of them. See, that's how you beat them down. You beat them up. Yeah, well, there's no question that, you know, getting getting senators to do that or uh, congressmen would be um, would be helpful. Well, here are the problems with democracy. Neither side is doing their job. Really? I mean, I, you know, the Democrats may be on the right side of democracy, but they're playing politics, too. If it's not efficacious for them to do something, well, okay. So, I, you know, I, I, we got to be honest about this. Um, uh, and, and there are issues here on the Democratic side as well as the Republican side now. And, and as sure. I said, one is more on the side of, of, you know, good versus evil, and it's just, you know, tactical matter in one sense. But they're wimps. The Democrats are wimps. There, I said it. They're wimps. They don't have Kelly McEnany cockamamie out there looking like she's uh, um, this year's version of uh, uh, Playboy Bunny dressed in pink. Did you see her? <laughs> she, keeps, oh my God, she looks like a Playboy Bunny with her blonde hair and her pink outfits now. She's she's appearing and you know, calling restrictions to curb COVID of Orwellian or saying, you know, Trump will be back to serve another four years. And, and or, you know, she's working as the press secretary and as Trump's spokesperson for the campaign. And, you know, and everybody's kind of going, oh, yeah, well, mm, yeah, okay. You're so quiet. Why are you so quiet? <laughs> right, right. No, no, no. I'm just letting you work it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't want to keep wor- work it. So are we, are we worried about, are, are, do you think Georgia is impossible for the Democrats? I think these elections are going to get certified. I, I, no, I'm I, talking about uh, the runoff. Oh, the runoff? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, pretty, pretty tough. Yeah, I mean, they haven't elected a Democrat in quarter century. And, uh, you know, to, so to win two on the same day, tough. Um, you know, conventional wisdom might be wrong a little bit. You know, in a weird way, Warnock might have a better shot than Ossoff. But uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Everybody's going to go down there. It's going to become a huge thing. Um, we'll see. We don't really know who shows up in something like this. It's We're in such right. uncharted territory that I wouldn't want to say it. anything's impossible. Can you get the MAGA Republicans to show up? Um, well, conventional wisdom right now is that they're feeling sort of defeated and exhausted. And uh, right, but but by the time you run enough gun ads, are you going to get them back to 
you know, when does Trump go down there and rally them? Well, they're saying that Trump shouldn't go. I mean, that's the conventional wisdom right now. And I Right. He did lose the state. But yeah. on the other hand, you know, they don't have anything else to kind of galvanize them. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I, I think I it's know. interesting. I tend, I tend to think they're both going to lose, but I don't know. Loeffler is a really weak candidate, even more than Purdue. But they're both bad. I mean, they're both bad candidates. They're both bad people. Is that what you mean? <laughs> well, maybe, <laughs> maybe both. They don't both. Um, I, Insider know. trading. I mean, you know, some ugly yeah, stuff. Yeah, not good. Not good. Yeah, not good. yeah. They, 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 this is not and uh, whatever. Um, I'm I'm very curious about it. Uh, I I've been watching how they're going after um, uh, what's his face. Um, what's the black guy's name? Um, they're they're going after him. He said something in the past about you can't be for um, the military and for Jesus. Now he's a pastor. Jesus would have said the same thing, by the way, if he were alive. So, uh, but that's what they're playing against him, saying, you know, he's a crazy radical, yada yada yada. Um, right, right. They're gonna. Right, but but uh, uh, you know, you, that's coming from the Easterners, Northerners, uh, you know, running the playbook because that is not coming from Georgians who could really understand uh, that sentence. Um, you know, in the Bible right. Belt. So I, I, I do think it's interesting. And, and as far as um, Osoff is concerned, um, he's a smart guy. Uh, he's not an idiot, that's for sure. Um, but there's something kind of weak about his presentation about him. And it may be just his style. You know, he's kind of like a wimpy looking guy. He's not a strong, virile man. I don't know. It'll be very interesting to see. I don't think we're there yet. I think people are still... Um, waiting uh, to see what happens with old Trumpster um, before they, they go full bore into that. Which takes us to the next mess. And it is a mess. This COVID thing is a mess, Matt. Oh, no. Now, before we go to COVID, can I just say one thing about Florida? Wow. That's all I have to say. The Dems are beating the crap out of themselves down here for having lost this when they really know that they should not have lost it. And... Uh, um, I mean, oh my God, Matt, you, it's ugly. It is ugly. And it's for all the reasons that I said last time we spoke, you know, in terms of, you know, they just don't have the infrastructure. The uh, legislature went back and, um, you know, they're, they're like, uh, uh, there are like no women in the Florida legislature. <laughs> it's just really extraordinary. And, um, you know, it's good old boys kind of network kind of thing first thing that they said is they're not getting involved in COVID, even though we had uh, 10,000 cases on Saturday and the real uh, positivity rate is something between 12 and 18 right, percent, right. depending upon who you speak with. Uh, literally the one of the few states that have absolutely no mandates in place whatsoever. Uh, and, and, and nobody knowing how to fix that because, you know, Florida is... The, de- the the Democrats have literally no voice. Now, it's sad. Um, it's very sad. But I bring it up because we're going to get to COVID now. And and if you want to know how much uh, the political infrastructure, and specifically on a local level, makes a difference, Florida is the perfect case of that. And um, you know, and at at why. Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer better change where they're coming from in terms of representation here, but that the local part, uh, part of the of the Democratic Party better figure out a way to get themselves into these states and fix it. There are still more Democrats in Florida than there are Republicans, and that they lost by such a huge margin all the way up and down the ballots, by the way, is insanity. Um, okay, so we'll go to COVID. Truly overwhelming to listen to some of this stuff. Uh, Three million are contagious in the U.S. Three million people. Uh, staggering takes a whole new meaning. Uh, South Dakota, as I said earlier in the program, 55% of people are testing positive for the virus. What's going on in Washington? Are you guys getting a surge? Yeah, we're spiking up. I mean, we're better in a lot of places. But, yeah, I mean, it's, it's going up everywhere pretty much. And, and this is at the core of it. Y- you got a president who is doing nothing. They haven't held, a, he hasn't pre- attended a meeting, it turns out now. They said three months or something? I mean, 
Does this not make you nuts? Angry? Uh, do you want Frustrated? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anyone who's saying, oh, I really wish Trump was at the COVID task force meeting. You it's know. just so he, 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 he's, he's taken to the bed. He's like a little old woman having uh, um, the vapors since losing the election. Yeah. Right? I think, yeah, well, you know, better that than firing missiles. Well, it's just people are dying, though. No, look, I... I People are dying, and nothing is being done to stop the dying from dying. Nothing. Florida just asked, uh, a whole bunch of mayors just asked DeSantis to issue a mask mandate, and he hasn't responded to them, other than yesterday or two days ago when the legislature met saying, we're not doing anything with shutting down, and we're not doing anything with mandates, and we're not doing anything, because he's been listening to that wacko um uh, herd immunity so guy. So how's it going for him? You know, first he was he he was a he was a semi normal congressman. Then he became super Trumpy. <laughs> He's he a nut for governor. Then when he was elected, he governed a little less Trumpy and a little more normal. And then he became super Trumpy again. Well, then you get so down to you, you get down to Matt. What? He's full on Trump. He can't go back no. now. He's in so deep. Is he popular? Is he no, power? he's hated. He has one of the highest uh, rating uh, hate ratings in the country. No, no. People don't like him. People aren't happy with him. But he's in control. This is the point. It doesn't matter whether people like you or don't like you. You're in control. And it, in this state, it is completely without one Dem in control. They have no control locally or anywhere else. None. So, you know, uh, th- that that's what it is. So they're call- he's t- he 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 was trending this morning on Twitter. Death Santos. I mean, this state's a mess, and nobody can stop him. He's he's in with that herd immu- uh, immunity guy, and he brought another one in from another who who was a blogger. No, he's despised, and I don't know what happens to him. And look at, you know, his wife comes out of media. My guess is all of these guys are sticking with Trump um, who say, my future is in media, what Trump is going to start, you know, he's going to start a, a new station or something, That'll be the end, and that's where we'll all go. That's, a, that's an honest future because the only other choice is to be uh, governor for four years. Does he think he can get into the presidency at this point after Trump lost? Ah, you know, what do you think? Yeah, that that sounds right to me. I mean, yeah, yeah, that's that that's that's pretty much. I mean, some of these guys went in. It's like it's like Christy Nome and and what's going on in in um, South Dakota, which is just the you know hard, and you know she's playing Trump all the way. She's got no other. Where is she going to say? All of a sudden, she's going to say, "No, no, no, wear masks." Yeah, you know they got themselves into a corner in one sense of of the word. Um, but this is. I don't think people understand just how bad it's going to get in the next few weeks for everybody. Now, I'm a lockdown person. I think they could have stopped, you know, and and, and again, Trump won on that meme, too, because everybody's afraid to use the word lockdown. Oh, my God. Oh, my. Right. Don't use the word lockdown. But the bottom line is, Matt, that's what should be happening right now. They should, you know, it's it's the holiday. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to shut things down the week of the holiday. And then we'll gradually put people back into the system. Uh in order to uh, uh, to stem this until until we can get people vaccinated, to where it makes a difference. But no, Mm-mm. nope, it's 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 bad. Uh, anything you got to say on that score? Well, I just uh, you know it's uh, it's so sad that this is that we're getting this huge spike on the eve of you know a vaccine being available. I mean, it's just. You know, it's heartbreaking for any loss uh, during this whole crisis. But, you know, to think that, you know, you have people dying and will have people dying just as the vaccine is being distributed. It's really it's awful. It is awful. And um, it's it's really awful that so many people think that there's no such thing as COVID because they 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 drank the juice. A couple of clean up things while you weren't looking folks Trump uh, against the Joint Chiefs is pulling troops out of Afghanistan and Iraq 
uh, selling jets to the UAE, also something they didn't want. Um, are we tr- sure Trump isn't working for Putin in his final hours, Matt? You know, I still don't think that story is, is, is over either. That's one of the things that you hear Republicans say, well, we're going to give the same lack of respect to, uh, to Biden as Trump was given. There was no, there was no there on the Putin score. Well, yes, there was. They just didn't get, take it to the end. And that, again, I blame that on Democrats for not seeing it through. But that's what we're in for. Pompeo, first Secretary of State to visit Judea and Samaria, also known as the West Bank, and announced this morning that all goods coming out of the West Bank would be put in as made in Israel. Uh, which takes us back to where we... We began, we're like in la-la land with this lunatic. Um, we gonna get- I bet you'd like that. With the I do. Thing. I do. Yeah. I do. Oh, no, no, no. Listen, we haven't well, gotten we into where- lunatic land. You know, I just no, lunatic you land. Know. No, I, no, I was going to the next part about oh, just in general um, where we are. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm, I don't agree with them pulling the troops out of um, Afghanistan and Iraq, but I certainly think that they've handled Israel well, and the truth is in the pudding, which is all is peace. And nobody freaked out when, you know, they're going to, the first thing that Biden might be asked to do, and I'm sure he has already been there, is to put the, um, uh, what's it called? The, uh, um, what, the embassy? The embassy back. No. But, um, no, he's not enough for the embassy. Yeah. yeah, right. But I, I, you know, I'm, I don't know. Where are you on that? Do you think that they, the, it's quiet. It's working. It's working. You got, you got, you know? People aren't killing each other no matter what. Everybody said would happen if you did that. It's a security issue for Israel. Well, we'll get into that another time, I'm sure. Uh, Is Trump finished? Taking bets. Is he leaving? Is he staying? Uh, Leaving. But not gently into the good night. No. (laughs) Will not be at the inauguration. And there won't be much of an inauguration. Aha. Does the... And this is what I think all of this is about. Does New York Southern District nail him the minute he gets out of office? No. Oh. My prediction, no. You think they just let it drop? Possibly, but nothing right away. That's my take. Because? Don't think that's where Biden's at don't know if they have the case totally nailed down yet so i'm gonna say uh these things you know they're gonna want the case to be solid i don't know if they've been able to get everything they need i'm gonna err on the side if they don't well here's what i'm gonna say somebody is gonna drop his tax returns once they have control of the irs You think the cuffs go on the first day, right? I don't, I don't, from who? From, from the, from the uh, Biden's team or are you talking about New York? New York. You don't think there's going to walk them by February. I, my particular point of view is that they do have him, uh, pretty nailed down. And the, the, the one thing that, that they, that they, aren't they going to get, where are we in the law? Did they get his tax returns or are they still arguing? Cause that, that, not, not even on anybody's radar at the moment. But I think those tax returns are going to solidify their case and they'll be able to get them from the IRS if they can't get them from, uh, you know, what other channels they thought they could get them from. So I I do think that they've got them and I think they've got them on a number of things and um, they'll take him down eventually. I don't know if it'll be like overnight, but they'll take him down eventually. But it'll be a di- it, 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 It'll be different than they did it in Israel with the two former presidents. You know what I'm saying? It's, it, it'll be handled differently. I think what's her name is uh, not just uh, Cy Vance, um, you know, whose father was one of the great loves of my life. I don't know if I've told you that story, but um, whoa, there's an episode. Yeah, there's an episode. Um, but uh, but I have to say that um, I, I don't know. If, I don't know if it'll be him, but what's her name? We'll do it. She's she's ticked off enough to uh, to do it but i don't know but i'm not i'm not with you that i'm sure he goes off into gently into the good night i'm not thoroughly convinced of that not yet so because i think he's going to go bonkers every day that that every day a little bit more a little bit more a little bit more a little bit more the closer it gets i mean he can't i agree yeah so I, I, i that's where i am on it 
I agree. I do think he'll leave. Okay. This was the question. I don't think he'll be there on January 21st. And I think somebody's going to help him leave. <laughs> yeah. I, I More likely he just goes to Florida and doesn't come back. Or Wouldn't that be lovely? I was hoping he would go for Thanksgiving. He didn't go for Thanksgiving just for that reason, by the way. But Christmas he'll go, maybe. All right, did we cover it all? Is there something I missed? We covered a lot of ground. We, we did, they, well, they, you know, like I couldn't wait to do this one because I thought this was like, whoa, what a week. Well, we had a lot stacked up. It's been crazy. So we're off for Thanksgiving. So love, we're off for Thanksgiving. We're, th- we're off for okay. Thanksgiving. Guys, happy Thanksgiving. Thanks for being part of all of this. Matt and I couldn't do this if we didn't know you all out there. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Listening to our crazy. <laughs> Listening to our right, Happy, kids. happy Turkey Day, darling. Talk yes, to you, you soon. Yes, you stay safe. Okay. okay bye-bye. bye-bye. Thank you for tuning in to The Helicaster Jane Show, a production of Resec LLC. The Helicaster Jane Show posts new podcasts Wednesdays, 3 p.m. Eastern, and is available at helicasterjane.com and on all your favorite apps. Be sure to visit us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and follow me on Twitter at The Halle CJ Show. Until next time, this is Helicaster Jane.